So first things first, Mike, how are you? Not too bad, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, it's it's yeah, it's a pretty weird time, isn't it? And and unfortunately, we've we've just gone back into lockdown here in the UK, so it's right. uh, yeah, it's rough, man. But at least the album is coming out tomorrow, which is exciting. Well, because I was wondering in previous talks with you, we've uh, spoken about your live performances and your um, how much you like uh, busking and having that direct contact with people. So, uh, was last year very challenging for you, not having that around? Yeah, totally. I mean, I, you know, for the last ten years, I'd say I've just been touring nonstop, busking mm-hmm. festivals, gigs, uh, and to not have that, I, th- I think in some ways. In some ways, it was a good thing because I just I just haven't stopped, and mm. this kind of forced me to to stay still and to actually just kind of calm down for a little bit. So in that way, it's good. I I have really missed it, and yeah, it's 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 tough. And I'm sure every musician says the same thing. But Passenger, as you say, is is so about the live show, is so sure. about that kind of connection. That yes, I think it has been really difficult. In this time, if you and obviously you, you've written loads of songs, uh, but is there something that this period of time has taught you, either about yourself or about the music that you make? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I was I was in lockdown on my own, which is quite a confronting situation. <laughs> so I, I think I think yeah, you, you definitely learn a lot about yourself uh, when you go through that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I. Again, one of one of the few silver linings has been how much I've written. You know, I just really turned to to songwriting, and actually, two or three of these songs on on the new album are, are from that kind of lockdown period. So, so that's certainly been, yeah, a, a, an upside, I suppose. Right, because like uh, I, I don't know exactly uh, what the timeline is, but a lot of the album was completed uh, before the whole lockdown happened, and then uh, you at some point decided to to kind of. Uh, take a step back and add three songs, take three songs away. So what was still missing and what were you looking for? Yeah, it's weird. So so we had initially had finished sort of, um, sort of yeah, this time last year. Hmm. Uh, and we mixed it and mastered it and had it all ready to come out in, in May. And it just felt like such a shame, you know, when it was we were approaching the release date and it was like we, we put so much work in, so much love into this record. And it just felt like we were going to just kind of chuck it out into the universe with no means of you know, getting behind it in, in this, in the normal way. So I held it back. Um, and it was a real blessing because as I said, I, I, I wrote two or two or three of these, these, these songs. And I don't, I don't think they were bad songs. The ones that we took off the initial record. It's funny when, when, you know, when you go into the studio with like, you know, 10 or 11 songs and you have your favorites and you have ones that you're not sure about and whatever, and you, and you record them all. Um, and I think some just come come out better and it doesn't necessarily mean they're better songs. It just means that for whatever reason, in a studio environment, you sort of captured it uh, or not. Um, so it's not like I hated those songs, but every time they would come on when I would listen to the album, I'd, I'd just be a bit less excited about them than, than the others. Mm. So it just kind of got to the stage where I kind of thought, well, actually, I've got these these three songs, which would make such a difference. Um, and yeah, it was it was a lot of extra work and, and hassle and everything else, but man, I'm so, I'm so glad that we did it. And I think it's been a real lesson actually, mm. you know, like moving forward to finish a record and actually give it a few months instead, you know, usually we just finish the record and then it's released and touring and, you know, and actually to have that few months just to kind of sit and let the dust settle and really live with the record and really understand it, uh, I think it's a really valuable process, which I'll, I'll take forward, I think. Right, because, well, you mentioned how much you've been touring over the last year. So, so is this the first time that you kind of had the ability to re- reflect on, on the music before releasing it? I think it really is. I mean, I, it's funny because I, I was a busker, you know, years and years ago. Sure. And, you know, when I was doing that, we, I didn't have the money all the time to go into studios and spend six months sort of making a, a perfect record. Mm. I, I, I got into the habit of going in for like two weeks and smashing it out. The record's the record, release it and then tour. And I, I don't think I've updated my settings since mm. then. You know what I mean? I think sure this experience has kind of made me realize actually I don't have to play by those rules anymore. I can take my time a little bit and as I said, it's 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 been a really valuable lesson. Hmm. 
And now the songs that you've written uh, are not necessarily about the happiest of things uh, or, or the, the reason why you wrote some of those songs weren't the, the happiest of occasions. You went through a, a big breakup. When something like that happens, do you immediately go to the guitar or do you kind of uh, look for solace in other people's music first? I think, yeah, good question. I think it can be both. I think certainly when you go through something like that, I think music suddenly feels different. I think it sure. speaks to you on a, on a deeper level because you're, you're in that kind of vulnerable headspace and suddenly lyrics mean everything and melody can kind of cut to the core of you. Um, so definitely, I, I definitely kind of turn to other people's music, but sometimes with songwriting, it doesn't happen immediately. It doesn't happen while something like that is going on. I mean, you're too, busy actually living that experience i think it can sometimes take a little while to filter through and and a few weeks or months later suddenly it all starts to to come out so yeah i mean these songs were written over the course of really like probably two years i should think so okay. it's sort of a bit a few of them were before the breakup a few of them were just after and as i said a few of them were in lockdown so it's it's kind of I quite like that because it, it feels like it's, it's quite sort of a journey through the through the whole experience. Well, yeah, I was thinking that as well because otherwise, if 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 all of them would come immediately after, they, they might be very angry. All of them, so yeah, angry and depressing, and <laughs> and hope, hopefully the album is neither of those two things. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say that because one thing that I noticed about these songs, it, it even though it's a they deal with a breakup. It doesn't sound like a depressing song. It's not like, oh, woe is me, that, that whole feeling. So, so yeah. was that, that a point of em emphasis for you? I think I'm always aware to give people light and shade on a record and 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 hopefully take them on a journey. You know, you, you can't just give people 10 depressing ballads and expect <laughs> people to enjoy that, you know. Um, and also, I think life isn't just one thing as well. Even when you're going through some, something really tough like, like that, it's still kind of, you still have your high moments. You still have really funny moments. You still have, you know, the whole plethora of emotions that you feel in life. So I think it's the job of a songwriter to, to try and represent that spectrum really. And mm. um, now that this, this idea of songs for the drunk and broken heart, when that, that when did that pop up that kind of, uh, Yeah, the, 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 in terms of the visuals as well, because I, I did read that you were inspired by uh, the movie The Joker and kind of that that uh, side. So, so when did this kind of yeah idea or, or concept pop up? I think it all started to come into focus when I wrote the title track, okay. um, which is a song for the drunk and brokenhearted. And uh, I love the title, and it's it suddenly kind of felt like a really good umbrella for the whole selection of songs. Like, you know we talked about the, the kind of origins of, of these songs already. And it just felt like not only is there definitely a running theme of, of broken heartedness, but throughout the record, there's, 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 you know, there's moments where it keeps on coming back to that kind of, yeah, alcohol based situation, <laughs> you know, like, you know, Suzanne is, is a story about this, this older woman who sits in the same seat in the same bar every night, drinking the same drink. And and you know, staring off into the distance, and remember to forget is about this guy that, you know, again is kind of found in the same pub, and he's always on his own, but he's sort of trying to make friends with everyone and making a mess of it. And I just started to feel like there was this kind of this thing that kept on returning to these, whether it's me or these characters, kind of in this drunk and broken-hearted situation. So it just seemed to fit really well. But it also seems like a, a very human thing because, I mean, everybody knows those people. Everybody yeah. knows their exactly. local bar and the people that, that, that kind of inhabit, uh, inhabit those places. Um, so when you write those songs, do you, do you have specific people in mind or is it kind of more of a conceptual thing? Yeah, I've, I've always written from, from different characters' perspectives throughout my, my career. And I think sometimes they are people that I've genuinely met and they're very specific okay. stories. With the two songs that I just mentioned, they're, they're more hypothetical, they're more fictional. But as you said, everybody has met Suzanne at some point. Right. Everybody has, has met that, that guy from Remember to Forget. So I think, you know, when you're telling stories like this, 
quite often you're not you're not telling the story of Nelson Mandela or Gandhi or someone extraordinary. You you you're telling the story of everyday people that everyone can relate to, and I think I think there's a power in that. Sure, and now there's there's something uh, that I find interesting, especially about nothing aches like a broken heart. Um, was that was that one of the later songs that you've uh, written? It was, yeah. Because it seems like in that song, obviously I might uh, be mistaken, but but it feels like, uh, yeah, it feels like you've come to grips more more or less with what the situation was. Is that fair to say? So yeah, it's a really good spot. It's a really good spot. It's a little bit further back than some of the other songs. I think it's a bit more objective and a bit. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think that's what happens when you experience things in life. It's very intense and, you're, and, and very close to you when you're going through it. And then as time goes on, you're able to step back and kind of see it for, for what it is. So that's a, a, an incredibly sort of a well-spotted question, yeah. Because when you write songs like those, and obviously uh, you've been through these uh, uh, songs hundreds of times uh, by this point, I imagine. So do, do they still have that? feeling for you or that original um, kind of emotion to uh... I think yes but not as intense okay. like I think when 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 I write songs like that it's it's it can be a very emotional experience it can be quite tough to to get them out sure. um, but that would be impractical to feel like that every time you played them you know every time you got up on stage and tried to play those songs if, if I felt like that every time I would be a, a, a crying mess at all of my gigs. So <laughs> I think it's a good thing that, yeah, you know, as you say, like you, you play them a bunch of times, then you record them, you listen to the mixes. By the time an album comes out, you've heard these songs a thousand times. Mm. So it's like anything else. You sort of, you get used to it and, and they sort of bed in. And so the short answer is no, like I don't feel them as much. However, I still... Okay, you know, when I'm when I'm playing a show or, or whatever, sometimes it can really hit you like a wave. Mm. Like when you play a song and you're suddenly transported back to when you wrote it and when everything was really fresh and real. So so yeah, it's 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 an interesting one that. And what I also wonder with um songs like these is when you uh when you originally write them, or maybe even after reflection uh, a couple of months later, do do they help you make sense of the situation? Or is it just something writing them off and then not thinking about it anymore? I think it, it, it helps massively, man. I, I think it it's quite therapeutic. I mm. think, you know, like, and I've always felt very lucky to have this. You know, everyone goes through hard, hard times. Everyone goes through difficult periods of their life. And trying to organize those thoughts and emotions is difficult you know and and to know how to deal with all of that stuff in a healthy way and i think i think songs really help me do that they they allow all of that to just kind of flush out of me and it's such a nice byproduct that i can turn all of this weird and uncomfortable stuff into hopefully beautiful songs which can then go on to help other people in in a similar situation you know mm. i think that's probably one of the best things about what i do you know so i can imagine you've had a lot of those type of comments over the years what what is there one that sticks out for you that you remember what as far as how people relate to the songs yeah or just something that they said they they heard in the song or how they connected it to their life yeah i mean so many i mean i think with let go it was pretty crazy you know when that got massive and i just got so many messages from all over the world you know like every corner of the world and all of these people had been touched by that song and you know had played it at weddings or funerals or any number of stories that that were just heartbreaking and amazing um and it's pretty humbling to to kind of get that response for for a song that you know I just wrote like any other song and 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 it went off to 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 mean so much to so many people just just very quickly then what was uh, was let it go written in a similar sort of mindset as as a lot of these songs yeah yeah i i tend to <laughs> i tend to write a lot after breakups i think <laughs> but, um, uh yeah i mean it, obviously i was i don't know how old i was maybe 
26 something like that so so I was a very different person back then and sure. in a very different situation but I suppose the emotion of it was was fairly similar yeah hmm. okay um finally then uh, one thing I that concept of remember to forget kind of that that idea of of drowning your your sorrows um i think we've all kind of dabbled in it uh, to, to certain degrees how have you found, uh, found its effectiveness and uh, does it work for you <laughs> i th i think i think it's a very quick fix i don't <laughs> think it's the answer of course and sadly i think whatever kind of mood you're in when you start drinking it just is magnified by the alcohol really mm. uh so yeah i mean when i when i went through the breakup I was definitely drinking too much I think it's I think it's a, an easy way to kind of block things out temporarily but shouldn't think it's the answer really because, no. because for you for you personally in this situation then when did you kind of get out of that sort of mindset and went into a more productive or maybe more creative uh, mindset good question yeah. good question I mean I, I definitely had a few months of kind of where I just felt like I was sort of tumbling through life a little bit and and wasn't really in the in the right headspace to to be creative um but i think life always comes and goes like that you know there sure. are there are times where it feels where it feels like you've kind of got things together and, and it feels quite controlled and quite manageable and then there are other times where you're just like i don't fucking know what's going on and you just try and hang on for dear life really so so yeah i mean i think i start in my better moments i start to embrace those times because i think well actually it's those times that create all of this nervous energy that i turn into songs i think mm. well less less uh, thought then because is, is that the core of it uh, you mentioned nervous energy but to, to kind of in in some way or other get th that energy out and and either put it to paper or, or create a melody out of it or, or something or at least do something productive with it i think so i think so i i think most art is probably created from that place, that same mm -hmm. place, whether it's negative or positive or happy sure. or sad or whatever. It's it's drawing from that that energy that comes from living and experiencing the the, the bizarre planet that we live on, you know. And I think I think all of that gets jumbled up, and 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 that's where art comes from. So, and I I think that's why it's so special as well, because when you relate to somebody else's art, what you're really doing is understanding them on quite a deep level not on a sort of conversational level not on a let's go for a drink level like i'm really understanding what you're putting out into the world and that's something spectacular i think well, one last thought then because this reminds me of something and you've always been very honest in your music so i assume you feel comfortable with it but is it a strange thing uh, knowing that a lot of people kind of know what you're going through not anymore i mean i think maybe maybe it's at, at one time it was but i think you know this is my 13th album <laughs> Fair uh, and as you say I've, I've always been very honest and i try and live my whole life like that really and also you know like the bus the experience of busking and going out and playing on a street full of strangers that you know probably don't want to listen to you all of that kind of stuff i think builds up quite a thick skin mm. and so actually i mean yeah it's it's a really good question i don't think about it too much now it's like and i think what you were asking about before about you know how how i feel about the songs once they're released mm. you know by that stage i feel confident with them as as songs not just as emotions as songs i, I love them mm. so so i'm confident in that way so I, I yeah it doesn't feel like someone's just reading my diary or anything like that right and then i suppose that's one side of kind of the job that I do, I, I tend to overanalyze these things, and sometimes it might be better not to not to think about it too much. No, but it's a, it's a great question to ask because I think, yeah, I mean, I, it's uh, I think a lot of people wonder the same thing about about you know opening yourself up in in, mm. in such a way. But I actually feel I actually kind of get strength from it, and I think it's it's uh, yeah, it's it feels a little bit self indulgent sometimes, if I'm honest. But, you know, if people want to listen to it, then that's great. <laughs> I think on that note, Mike, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to sit down to talk with me. It's always an absolute pleasure. Thank you for the brilliant Thank you question. so much.